I still have some stuff that I want to, to release to the body of Christ. Amen. Some principles that God has given me. And, and I want to make sure that we have time enough to I want to rush through this. I thank God for all the deacons, mothers, saints, and friends. Amen. All the ministers. God bless you. I got, I got some, some great women ministers out here. Amen. You know, it's something like that you, 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 they, 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 you know, that sometimes you think about this, but some people don't want women to minister. But, Lord, if women don't preach, who going to preach? Lord, have mercy. Thank God for these great women of God. Amen. Minister Ann. Amen. Minister, Minister Dickman. Amen. Minister Gilmore. Minister Jones. Amen. It's a blessing to have you guys in the house. Amen. And amen. Thank God for Elder Sims. Amen. Pray for him and we'll be doing with him. I was a bit conflicted, and I know I'm on Facebook Live, and he may see if I talk to my, my friend, Pastor Smith. I read up a bit conflicted. I wanted to go to uh, uh, to their uh, church anniversary they have it today in, in Salem. If you guys can, go, 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 go pull over there and be a great word of God. But but this man of God has been following me some everywhere. And, and you know, and to thank God, you know, that he, he support because sometimes you see the pastor go preach, but you don't see the assistant go with him. I thank God that's not the case in this house. So I've got to be down there with my brother, amen, to, to support him as he goes and gives the word of God. And y'all pray for him as he does that. I think I have covered everybody. It's a blessing to be in the house of God. It's a blessing to see you. Let's go ahead and let's stand. Amen, amen, amen. I got to go grab something real quick. Go hit that next slide for me real quick, brother Thorne. I got to go grab this. Amen. Amen. That is our service series. I got it up there, right? Sermon series, this is that's law. Amen. What God wants us to learn from his law. I should have kept a lot H, but y'all give me credit on that one. I, I'll fix that. But what God wants us to learn from his law. And, and I'll say this, and Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm taking all this business and it's supposed to be recorded. If anybody can find where they put my thing that goes up here, please put it up. I know I took it off for convocation, but come get it back to me. This is the one I travel with, so y'all can find that for me. Amen. Thank you so much. And if not, I try to get somebody to laminate me another one. Amen. So we think we're talking about the law. So let's go to the word of God, if y'all don't mind. In Leviticus 19 and 1, I'm going to go ahead and read this so y'all can, so can sit down. Amen. It's in the English Standard Version. It says, And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the all speak to all the congregation of the people of Israel and say to them, You shall be holy, for I the Lord your God am holy. Every one of you shall revere his mother and his father, and ye shall keep my Sabbath. I am the Lord your God. Do not turn to idols or make for yourselves any gods of cast metal. I am the Lord your God. Somebody repeat after me. Say, teach me how to honor. Teach me how to honor. Let's go ahead and pray. If any man speak, let him speak of the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God given, that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praised and dominion forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. We're going to talk about honor. And I'm going to try my best to get through this because I, I want to take my time because honor is very important. I want you to understand something. My first slide, and it's just very simple. You got it, amen. Honor is very important to God. Amen. Honor is very important to God. You see, God tells Moses to speak to the people about honoring man and God. Now, if you notice inside that scripture, he's talking about honoring man. He's talking about honoring God as well. He instructs the people to honor their father and their mother. This is referenced also in the New Testament as being the first commandment with promise, right? God says the first commandment with promise. And so the promise is that if you honor your mother and your father, your days will be long upon this earth. Amen? And so you got to understand that this is something that God's talking about honoring man. But he also instructs us to honor God through keeping the Sabbath and not serving other gods. See, disrespecting the Sabbath and making idol gods was a dishonorable act to God. And from this text, we learn that honor is important to God. And, and, and so it is important that we honor man and God. I'm going to talk about both of those today. Because the Hebrew word for honor is yakar. And it means to show deference, esteem, or recognition. Now I know you guys know what esteem and recognition means. But I'm going to give you definition for the word deference. Deference is humble submission or respect. Uh, I'm going to defer to somebody else. And I could do something for myself, but I'm going to give deference to someone else. And deference is humble submission and respect. So therefore, get this, this is what God wants to teach his people through his law, that honor is tied to humility and submission. 
Now, God works on the honor system. Somebody say the honor system. It's going to make sense in a little bit. He works on the honor system. Simply put, the honor system is this. That you have to honor God and man if you want favor from God and man. And believe it or not, this is going to really blow your mind maybe, but the truth of the matter is, you need favor from God and man. Oh, we got quiet inside of here. I don't need man. I didn't need to be out favor from God. You need favor from God and man. I'll break it down because you cannot believe that you can honor God and dishonor people and expect God to make people honor you. I'm going to preach inside this house. You can't expect to honor God and dishonor people and expect God to uh, make people honor you. Jesus said in a parable in Matthew 25 and 40, he said, and the king, amen, and the king, you got this one good, amen, and the king shall answer and say unto them, verily I say unto you, insomuch as you've done it unto the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. So when you dishonor people, you are dishonoring God. God, why did this happen this way? Because we thought we can treat people any kind of way, didn't we? Right. And call ourselves saved and sanctified and full of the Holy Ghost. You see, Samuel honored God and Eli. Right? And the Bible says that God gave him favor with God and man. Go to that next scripture for me real quick. Uh, and the child, this is 1 Samuel 2 and 26. And the child Samuel grew on and he was in favor both with the Lord and also with who? So you needed favor with God and man, didn't you? So the Bible says he had both of those things. Now, if you say, well, that's Samuel. Can I say you this? That even Jesus gained favor with God and man. In the book of Luke, the second chapter, the 52nd verse, it says, And Jesus increased in wisdom. He got smarter and in stature. That means he grew up to be taller. And also in favor with God and Y'all better see this. So people that want favor with man and not God will be disappointed because they don't understand that God holds the hearts of man in his hand and the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. And man does not have the power to bless you if God has cursed you. So if you're going to dishonor God and try to suck up the man, you're in trouble. Because man can't bless you when God's cursed you. But, but, but get this, get this. People that want favor with God and not man would be disappointed because they don't understand that by being dishonorable to God's creation, they are also dishonoring him. And guess what? God uses man to bless man. Can y'all hear that? That God don't use man to bless man. That's why I always tell y'all, if you're going to be blessed, you want to be blessed, you, bless, you should be born and say, Lord, I want to be blessed so I can bless somebody else. Because God always uses man to bless man. He uses people to bless people. That's why the Bible says he gives seed to the what? So if you are a sower, you will always have seed. But the money stops with you. Amen? You're never going to get those things back. And so this is what God says. So Samuel and Jesus were both mighty prophets. They were both priests of God. They gained favor with God and man because they understood the honor system. They understood that you need to honor God for the spiritual, but you can disqualify yourself from spiritual authority and natural blessings by dishonoring man. So let's look at some principles of honor. Let's look at some principles of honor. So the first principle is that Christians, Christians are distinguished by the honor that they show. I know y'all don't want to hear that one. Because sometimes Christians can be some dishonorable people, can't we? Oh, just being real because we want God to save our souls so we can go to heaven. But we want to be different people. I've always wondered about that. I said, you know, how can people be saved and still be racist? How can people be saved and still be hateful? How can people be saved and still be spiteful? Well, the truth of the matter is they're good with God, but they don't want to be good with you. Well, they, they want to be good with God, but, but they don't want to be good with you. But real Christians are distinguished by the honor that they show. Let me show you a scripture. Romans uh, 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 12 and 10 says, Love one another with brotherly love, with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing what? It says to outdo each other in showing honor. You see, the people of God should be people that are competing with one another to show honor to one another. That's Bible, right? Outdo. That means I got to do better than you in showing honor. 
That means you should be living your life saying, Lord, let me be a person that outdoes everybody else in showing up. We should be competing trying to show up. We compete for everything else, though. And the church is full of competition and jealousy and envy and people trying to get titles and positions and all those things. We compete for those things. But God said what you really should be competing for, what you really should be trying to outdo somebody in, is showing honor. We got quiet in this house. Therefore, the church should be a place that is overflowing with honor. It should be overflowing with honor. And that honor should not just be extended to the pastor. Let me tell you this. I thank God that y'all love me. I thank God that y'all honor me. I thank God that I have some great saints that will pour into me, that will give me a credit, that will give me a, a honor. I thank God for that. But it should extend for more than just me. Here's the truth of the matter. You just can't come and bless me and don't bless nobody else. You can't honor me and want this honor your brother and your sister sitting beside you. Oh, they got quiet in this hour. But see, sometimes we say, Lord, I'm good with the pastor. Now, I, if I'm preaching on you, just say, hey, man, nobody will know I'm talking about you. But, but you know, we want, we want to honor the pastor, but we want to honor nobody else. And that's not good. Amen? That's not good. I gotta honor you as well. You see, you see, it should be given to all the saints of God. Yet it seems that church is a place where honor is in scarce supply. We don't have a lot of honor in the church, but this is not the will of God. He wants us to be known for our practice of trying to outdo one another in showing honor. One of the problems with showing honor is that we sometimes fail to recognize the honorable things that people do. We don't even recognize when somebody works sometimes and, and, they, and they work their fingers to the bone trying to make something happen and we don't even recognize it sometimes. We don't recognize what people do on a consistent basis. Mother Ellen made a good point this morning. She said, you know, I have a responsibility to be here to teach Sunday school. Uh, and she is there because, you know, Mother Smith, uh, Mother, Mother, she knows Mother, Mother Smith, she, she's having a problem with her eyes right now. You know, she wants to worry about who's going to take over Sunday school because somebody there and say, you know what, I'm going to make sure I'm going to be in place. That deserves honor. People, I, I'm going to preach this and I got to get out of here. I want y'all my best to get out of here. You know, we got Brother Shelf Warren, Brother Shelf Warren. We, we, we had a situation where we really couldn't get the church cleaned on time and, and where, where, where it should be clean. Brother Shelf Warren stepped up and said, Pastor, don't worry about that. I'm going to take care of that. Got him and a couple of young people, they begin to make sure the church was clean. That deserves honor. Because the church don't get clean because you think it's going to be clean. It shouldn't be clean. The church should be. No, no. It does not get clean because you think it should be. Somebody got to do it. Oh, y'all better hear me. That deserves honor. Thank God. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell y'all this. I'm going to try to hit them out. I even now say, you know, I'm, I'm going to have to get to with my ministers. And, and me and the ministers, we took two Sundays and we're going to make sure you ain't got to do it every Sunday. I said, because if anybody going to have to start to make sure that we're going to honor, it's going to start the ministers first. Amen. Y'all better be real. I'm, if you want a, a position in this church, you better realize I'm going to make it work. I'm going to make, because you, whenever I preach to my people, y'all better get this, I must first put it on them. And if they can't take it, they got to go sit down somewhere. Because whatever I expect to see from y'all, I must expect them to be exempt from the first. That's what being a minister is all about. And if you truly are about honor, you ain't got no problem with it. I'm just being real. You can't be too high and mighty to, 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 to run a vacuum. You can't be too high and mighty to clean a bathroom. Everything that we do, I, I can name so much stuff that people do, to do inside the house of God. But I'm going to tell you, sometimes, if you got a good Sunday school teacher, tell them thank you every now and then. If you got a good person that's doing something around the church, and you see them doing something, tell them thank you now every now and then. Brother Torn, every time I go back there, he done bought some new gadgets. Right now, he got something where I can walk this way, it's going to follow me this way. I can walk over here, it's going to automatically follow me this way. Guess what? That deserves honor. And it should not always have to come from the pastor. It don't cost you nothing to tell somebody you're doing a good job. Amen. We got people back at the door. Brother, Brother, Brother Jimmy doing a convocation. Ran the door. Got, got the young people back there. We got to the Abraham Brother William Lee. Want to go hold the door for them. Sometimes tell them, good job. Now, if I didn't call your name, it's okay. Because somebody see what you're doing. And we preach in honor. And somebody going to tell you, good job. It shouldn't always have to come from me anyway. Because we should be trying to outdo each other, show honor to each other. 
But we outdo each other rebuking each other. We outdo each other criticizing each other. But do you outdo each other honoring each other? I've learned. Oh, I've learned. Do not accept criticism of people who you would not accept advice from. If I ain't going to accept your advice, I don't think I'm worthy of advice. If you're not worthy of advice, I'm not going to accept your criticism either. But if you are worthy of honor, I got to honor you. Amen? And it is, we don't recognize sometimes. And what you don't recognize, you will never celebrate. And what you don't celebrate may, it just may, walk out your life. Hear this, hear this. Sometimes we have missed out on the, out on the ministry of people because we never recognized and in turn did not celebrate and honor them. I'm going to tell y'all, you know, we had a situation, this stuff right here at the top, and, and, and they don't want me to call, I don't want them to call their name, but we actually told y'all before, I did tell y'all who, who took care of it. We had somebody to take care of the, making sure that, the, that we didn't have those spots inside of our, our roof up there, because it didn't look good, right? I said, well, you know, we got...